So, last time we learned about the generalization of, I mean, Dirac theorem or S theorem, I mean, into cycles with large lengths. Another generalization we can also think is that, uh, I mean, we can consider directed graph instead of just undirected graph. And for a digraph D, say, Let's write, I mean, delta plus d with a minimum out degree, and which is like minimum of out degree of b in the diagram, and delta minus d with the minimum in degree. <coughs> and let's write the, uh, okay. D of V as a total degree of V. So for V, we add all the out degree and in degree, then let it, let's call it this way. So this provides the all concepts to indicate the degree of V. <coughs> and in terms of having a uh, Hamilton cycle or cycles, the, if you have a loop, then that doesn't, I mean, help you any in any way to get a cycle. And also, if you have, say, two multi, I mean, in multigraph, say, two edges from one vertex to the other, then again, I mean, there is no way that you you use both edges in a finding some cycle. So this doesn't help. So we can assume that uh, those doesn't happen in the diagram that we consider. So rather diagram D, let's give some name, be a strict diagram if it has no loops and has at most one copy of each ordered pair as an edge. <coughs> but you can still have uv and vu together because as an ordered copy they are different. But uh, you don't have the situation that uh, there are two uv edges. <coughs> so, in 1960, Guilla Holy, I don't know how to pronounce this person's name, but this is one person proved that uh, in a for a strict n vertex diagram T, if both minimum out degree and minimum in degree is at least n over 2, then D is Hamiltonian. So here, Hamiltonian cycle is a cycle with uh, this consistent orientation. So this is called Hamilton cycle. If we have a, I mean, if this is spanning, this is called Hamilton cycle. If we have a, some cycle with uh, I mean, oriented in long way, some edges oriented in long way, then we don't consider it as a cycle. <coughs> so this is a generalization of Dirac theorem. And also, Udar in 1972 proved a generalization of Ora theorem. If for a strict digraph, if the uh, out degree of u plus in degree of v is at least n whenever u, v are not adjacent, then d has Hamilton cycle. So here adjacent means that if there is an edge in either direction, then we say these are adjacent. 
if there are no edges from any of these to the other, then this is non-adjacent. <coughs> and these two theorems, this is the generalization of Ores theorem. And these two theorem can both be derived from the following theorem by Mainier. If G is a strict, strongly connected digraph such that T of U plus T of V is at least 2n minus 1 whenever U, V are distinct non-adjacent vertices then G is Hamiltonian. So, prove, to prove this theorem, let's prove, uh, let's collect a lemma, which is useful for us. Suppose that P1 to PK is a path a directed path and V is a vertex outside the path. If at least one of say VI V and V VI plus one are not an edge for each I between 1 and k minus 1, then the number of edges either from v to t, what's t? No, v to say direct path p, p, say vp. And from Vp to V are at most k plus 1. So what it says is that uh, if you have a path, directed path, if uh, there, are, there is a vertex outside V, and then if we have these two edges, vi to v and v to vi plus 1, then we can take this path, this longer path, by inserting this v here. So what it says is, is that if this is not possible, then the number of edges between v and this path are bounded. It's not too many. The proof of this is actually just by counting. So we know that one of these are not here, and then one of these are not here, and also one of these are not here, and then you count them all. One of these are not here, and one of these two are not here. Although at the end, these two, I mean, so here, I mean, we counted out of these two, and most one is here. Out of these two, and most one. Out of these two, and most one, and most one, and most one. So you collect k uh, minus one, and then you could have this edge or this edge. We don't care. So this last one is, I mean, even if, even though, I mean, this yields a bigger one, but we don't insert it. So, I mean, it's, okay for this condition. So those two can be here, so it's at most k plus one. So I'm gonna omit the 
rigorous proof, but you can prove it for yourself. <coughs> Now with this, I mean, how we want to prove this manual theorem is roughly the following. So we want to take, say, longest cycle. And this is the longest cycle. And then if this is not Hamilton cycle, then what we do is we take uh, some path outside which connects, say, some two vertex here, which is as close as possible. And if you take this vertex, then this vertex has no edges inside here. Because if it has this edge, then this would be in a shorter, I mean, path linking, I mean, closer to vertices, which contradicts to the, I mean, minimality of the distance between these two. And also, if we have a edge here, again, this is a path with a smaller distance. So it doesn't send any edges to here. And moreover, it also does not send many edges to this part. Because if it sends too much edges and end up having, sorry, the other way, these two edges, then we could have taken uh, this longer path, I mean longer cycle, cycle longer than this part. So this doesn't send too many edges. And we want to get the contradiction by finding two non-adjacent vertices whose degree sum is large. And then those are the some vertices inside of here. They are not adjacent with this V, say. And also what we, what we know is that uh, for these vertices, because this is, because, oh, sorry, because this is the longest path, longest cycle. So this is actually shorter cycle. This must be a shorter or same length cycle. But if we can say insert this edge, I mean this vertex to here and then the next vertex also to say here. So many of these vertex can be inserted in here. Then now this cycle might be longer. Before this path is shorter than this, but after inserting this to, I mean, this cycle, now, I mean, this cycle could be longer. That means, that implies that uh, the vertices here, the vertices here cannot have too many edges to this part. And also, it, this cannot have too many edges to outside, otherwise, I mean, this insertion might be possible. So, intuitively, we can somehow find some vertex here, again, which has not too high degree, and then this also has not too high degree, and they are non-adjacent. So we could contradict this if this was not the Hamilton cycle. So that's why we have proved this lemma. So this insertion is not possible, then we, this provides the, I mean, upper bound of the number of edges between, which, con which contributes to this dv. And then we want to select some vertices here <coughs> with also smaller total degree. So that's basically how we will proceed. So assume d is a uh, strict connected, I mean, strongly connected. D 
tigret without any Hamilton cycle. And let S be a maximal vertex set. I mean, let's say maximum largest size vertex subset of PD having a spanning cycle x1 to say xm in say ts with as is not the entire vertex set because we assume t is not Hamiltonian and now we want to prove that there exist two non-adjacent vertices satisfying this I mean contradicting this condition Let's actually prove a slightly stronger statement. There exist vertex outside of S and some index A and some number B satisfying the following. One, X A and B is in H2, P is not adjacent to any of P, uh, X A plus 1 to X A plus B. 3, degree of B plus degree of X A plus B is at most 2 and minus 1 minus B. So here, this is this B will be this one. And then these vertices, some of these vertices will be X1 to this X A plus 1 to X A plus B. And this will be X A. So once we show this claim, then we are done because we found two vertex with uh, B is at least one. So this is strictly smaller than 2 and minus 1. So two vertices contradicting this assumption so which proves that uh, this I mean graph must have a Hamilton cycle so it's only left to prove this theorem I mean this claim <coughs> so let's consider case one when there's no path which leaves F and returning to S. So we have this cycle S. Then if we can find the path from S to S, then we are good. But otherwise, the first case is if that's not possible. Then what we know is since D is strongly connected, And S is not the entire vertex set. So there must exist a cycle C of length at least 2 sharing exactly one vertex. Say, X A with S. So we have X A and then some cycle. So here we all let's allow cycle of length two. So it could be the case. So this could be X A B and this could be okay to take as a C. So let V be the first vertex. So successor of 
x a on this c. Then what do you know? Then there exist no path between v and s minus x a. Because if there exists some path say going this way, then this is a path leaving s and returning to s or contradiction to the case assumption. If this is the path, then this together with this is a path leaving s and returning to s. So by the case, I mean assumption, there is no path between v and the rest of them in either direction. in either direction as otherwise we get a path leaving s and returning to s now we want to sh show that uh, the claim holds with p equal 1 we show the claim holds with p equal 1. So which means that this vertex and this vertex are the ones that we are looking for. So. What do you know? So let's count the edges between say V X A plus 1 and the rest the rest has a house vertices outside uh, S and vertices in S. Yeah. Then we know each vertex in outside of S, which is not V, is incident to and most two edges also incident to v or x a plus 1 because if there are say some vertex here outside which so from y to v, there could be at most two edges, and from y to x a plus one, there could be two, at most two edges. And if there are three of them, I mean, three of them present in the directive graph, then we either get this or this. So out of three, we have at least one of these two paths. But if we have this path, then you get say this path from s to s and if it's the other way then this gives us a path from s to s so there are almost two so for each one of them contributes almost two to the dv plus d x a plus one And the vertex V is incident to at most two edges, which also incident to a uh, x a. 
So XA is sending edge here, but there could be another edge sending here. So there are at most two edges between B and XA, and there's no edges between B and the remaining vertices in S. If this holds, then this is the path that's forbidden. And if this holds, then this is the path that's forbidden. So V sends no edges whatsoever in here. Sends or receive. It doesn't sense or it doesn't receive. <coughs> and each vertex in S minus X A plus 1 is instant to at most two edges also instant to x a plus one. So these two other vertex, there is no restriction, there could be at most two. So if you sum up d v plus t x a plus one is what? So from here to here, you said that every vertex sends at most two. So twice times number of vertices outside this. And then V sends at most two edges to this part, only to XA, so plus two. And then this sends, I mean, many edges, could send many edges here, I mean, which is two times the size of S minus itself. So that's 2n minus 2 size of s minus 2 plus 2 plus 2s minus 2. Then this is 2n minus 2, which is 2n minus 1 minus 1. So this is b. So it shows that this claim holds with b equal 1. This is the case 1. So case 2. <coughs> Now, suppose that there exists a path leaving S and returning to S. We choose uh, such a path P from XA to x a plus c with smallest possible c. So we have s, we have x a, we have x a plus c, we have this, let's say this is b. Let be the successor of XA on P. Then the maximality of S implies that C is bigger than 1. Because if C is 1, then this path together with this Here's a longer cycle. So there are at least one vertex between XA and XA plus one, C. Actually, there are many vertex, more than the length of this, I mean, length of this path minus one, many. <coughs> so, uh, let T be the path x a plus c, x a plus c plus 1 to x a 
a minus 1 xa. So this path, let's say this path is t. Then how many edges does it have? It has m minus c plus 1, say, vertices. So, the number of vertices on this t is this. And what do you know? As s is maximal, v and t satisfies the condition on the previous lemma. What does it mean is that uh, if we have uh, these two edges, then what do we have? We start here and then come back here to get a longer cycle than S which is a contradiction to the maximality of S. So it's satisfied that uh, there are no VI and VI plus 1, and it sends edge, it, it receives edge. This doesn't happen. So previous lemma then says that what? The number of... <coughs> so, V is instant to at most m minus c plus 2 edges also instant to say vt. And as c is minimum, I mean, minimality of c. implies that V is not adjacent to x a plus 1 to x a plus c. Because if this is a case, then this is a shorter path than P. And if this is a case, then this is a, I mean, path contradicting the minimality of C. minus 1. Then, now we chose one vertex, which does not send much edges to here. Does not send or receive much edges from T. And now we want to choose one vertex here. But again, it's actually possible to have this, because even if one, this, is here, so if we take this cycle, it may not be still longer than S if there are many vertices here while the, this P is short, then this is not contradiction. So what we do is we take a better cycle than this, I mean better path than this T in some aspect. So that uh, we can actually identify certain vertex which does not send too many edges to here. So, which means that uh, we want to say extend if this vertex can be inserted here, then we insert it. And then next vertex can be inserted, then we insert it. And now this vertex you cannot insert anymore. Then, now you take this as your vertex. So this does not send too many, too many vertices on too many edges to here, these vertices. So that gives us some upper bound on the degree, total degree of this vertex. So that's our goal. So we insert vertices in here, if possible, until we cannot anymore. So that means we take a B be the largest 
integer in C between 1 and C such that G contains a path x a plus c path from x sub a plus c to x a with the vertex set is actually s minus x sub a plus b to x sub a plus c minus 1. So all the previous vertex is already part of this path. So this is a path which connects, I mean, which is from x sub a plus c to x a. And this one is the, I mean, not there. So that's the, let we take b to be the largest integer such that g contains a path from this vertex to this, including the all the previous vertex, x a plus 1 to x a plus p minus 1, as well as the vertices in t. Let r be such a path. In fact, such a path r must exist because as if you just take b equal 1 with r equal t, then this is a valid choice. This may not be the largest integer, but this is an integer such that the g contains a path t from this vertex to this vertex, so that uh, everything between here are gone. So exactly this path. So t satisfies this with b equal 1. So b is well defined. So among all of them, we choose the largest integer b, and then such a path r. So we have now x a plus 1, I mean, a plus p, sorry, x a, x a plus c, and this is r, and this is p. This is x x a plus b plus p x a plus b plus one to here and now x a plus p minus one could be inserted here so we don't know whether there is an edge here so this is the our situation now. Then P union R is a cycle, so maximality of S implies that P is strictly smaller than C. Because if all of them are already included, then you get a longer cycle. Because if all of them are included, already included here, then this already, this R already has a length of, length S, size of S. And then you add certain paths more, then you get a longer one. So, by the maximality of p, the vertex x sub a plus p together with the path r 
satisfies the condition on the previous lemma. Which means you cannot really insert it here. Otherwise, this is a valid path longer than R. So, x sub a plus b is incident with m most m minus c plus p plus 1 edges, which is also incident to r. So the number of edges coming this way or this way are all together counted by most that much. So which is one bigger than the number of vertices on R. <coughs> so now we count the degree of B plus degree of X A plus B. So what do we know? B sends Okay, so the V and X A plus B. And then we have S and outside the, the vertices outside. Maybe you also delete this. So here again, each vertex sends at most two edges to these two. If 3, then you find the path this from one to the other. So path from, in this picture, in the original picture, we have S, X, A, X, A plus C, we have B, this. If some vertex outside uh, sends three vertices to, I mean, three ed edges to these two, then either we get this path, then this contradicts the minimality of C, or this path, then this, I mean, sorry, this path, then this contradicts the minimality of C. So, this sends at most two. So it's two times n minus m minus one. And also V is incident to and most I mean V is not in incident with any edges from here to here. There is no edge here. And to here, we show that at most this many edges are incident with B, also incident with T. So, edges between this and this are at most this. And now, from X sub A plus B to here, you can divide it into two. The vertices on R and outside R. Vertices in on R, you can. So be, this maximality implies that this is m minus c plus b plus one. And then the rest of them could be, I mean, no restriction. So each vertex could have two edges. So plus two times c minus b minus one. So altogether, this is 2m minus 1 minus p. And this proves the claim. And as the claim is proved, what does it mean? If we have a digraph, which is not Hamilton cycle, which does not have any Hamilton cycle, then we take the maximum vertex at S with the spanning cycle then you can find two vertices which are not adjacent, which satisfy each T 
degree sum is less than 2 and minus 1. That contradicts the assumption. So it implies that, did I write g here? Let's write t. Anyway, then this digraph d, did I write g before or t? Anyway, this digraph must be Hamiltonian if that satisfies the condition. And this also proves the theorem. So now this finishes the chapter of connectivity and now we will move to the chapter of coloring in the next video.